Hello, everybody. Welcome to another EICC, that's Eastern Iowa Community College, and CRDC, that's Clinton Regional Development Corporation, collaboration where we talk to industry professionals in construction, manufacturing, education regarding their response to the COVID-19 pandemic, but also what workforce development looks like moving forward. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Chris Caves. Chris, I don't know what direction you're in here. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you do for Eastern Iowa Community College. Hello everybody, this is Chris Caves. I am a workforce development coordinator and corporate trainer for Eastern Iowa Community Colleges. You got that down to a T now. Right, it's a big business card. You know, Chris, I was actually out fishing in Minnesota last week and I got a really bad sunburn. So if people want to look at this video and see these raccoon eyes, that's what it's due to. Fishing for a week, not outside, just kind of pounding on doors, doing the COVID-19 thing. I was out there actually catching bass and pike and muskie. It was an awesome experience. And it was kind of great to get back and just kind of center myself again. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, you know what, Andy? It's a no judgment zone. I think you look great. And <laughs> As far as post-pandemic rules and social norming, out the window. I'm a big fan of Sunblock moving forward, but speaking of (laughs) awesome things, we have with us today the Vice President of Strategic Markets for Bush Construction and McCarthy Bush Corporation, which is the umbrella for also uh, Clinton Engineering right here in Clinton, Iowa. I'm excited to have us introduce Amy Simler. Amy, what's happening? Hi, great to be here. Happy Friday. Glad you got some sun. (laughs) Uh, And I agree. I think that the uh, post-COVID sunshine summer, letting everybody get out and do the things that they would normally do in a summer has been fantastic. You know what? I totally agree. And I am one of those people who, when the sun starts going down and we enter into winter, I get a little bummed out, right? So I love when the sun shines, I can soak up some of that vitamin D, just not so much to the fact that my face burns <laughs> like second degree. So I just thought it was a glare off your shirt. So it's totally- <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, Amy. You're way too kind. So Amy, tell me a little bit about what you do for Bush and McCarthy. Bush is a corporation. What's your response has been to the COVID-19 pandemic? And then we'll kick it over to Chris to talk about workforce development. Right. So at McCarthy Bush Corporation, um, I work heavily with marketing, sales, client relations, um, and then some internal marketing as well. Um, So with Bush Construction heavily on the external marketing and sales and the corporation um, trying to work at um, promoting what each company is doing to all of our other employees because we do want to have that silo this feel to where everyone understands what we're all here for towards the end goal. Um, so that's what I get to do on a daily basis. Um, I get to be involved in a lot, lots of good fun aspects of our company. And um, one of the most interesting, obviously, was the COVID um, situation that we had um, starting in March. And we're a very traditional industry. We do construction, heavy highway, and mining. Um, so typically, we are back a couple years, like 25, as far as trends and um, workforce environments. So this was something that pushed us out of our comfort zone quickly. Um, And it actually started with our leadership um, involuntarily to where some people right after spring break, that was the quarantine time. Like if you've been gone on an airplane or out of state, you have to stay home for two weeks. So those that maybe thought that there was no way to work from home or to have a different work model, got thrown right at home. And then we have half in Illinois and half in Iowa. So if you lived in Illinois at that moment, you also needed to stay home because of governor's orders. Um, And it was super exciting to see how quickly everyone adapted. We have Microsoft Teams, we um, used email and phone seamlessly. um, And we're looking forward to some exciting things going forward on how we can keep some of those things happening. Absolutely. I mean, I I will say that uh, kind of an older mindset was, can we work from home and do I trust my employees to actually get their work done? And that's been a discussion for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Production of new technologies. But I think the COVID pandemic made us really like kind of rip off that bandaid. And we've realized that you can trust people to to get Mm -hmm. their work accomplished from home. And you can continue to move forward as a company or a corporation. So I am excited to see that companies are leveraging new technology to ensure that their people can work from home safely and continue to do amazing things for the company. Now, Amy, 
as we look towards workforce development, uh, you've had some downtime, obviously, with the COVID, but I continue, you're continuing to hire, right, as well? Right. So this is a busy season for especially our heavy highway and construction industries. Um, so we do have websites. You can get on McCarthyBushCorporation.com or Corp.com, and there is an um, employment link that you can go to that will take you to our HR tab. Um, and this is, it is something that um, while people have unfortunately lost positions that they already had in especially the hospitality industry, um, if they've ever wanted to try something out differently, this is a great time to do that. Um, this is a season where we hire interns. Um, job shadowing is always an option for us on all of our um, companies platforms. So that's just like a trial. Like if you are able to have some downtime and want to reach out and do some job shadowing just to see what you might like, we have um, under our umbrella, our corporate umbrella, we have manufacturing with um, Ortel Metalworks, we have Linwood Mining and Minerals, we have McCarthy Improvement with Heavy Highway, and obviously Clinton Engineering and Bush Construction with Construction. So yeah, love to have anybody reach out that wants to try it out. It's a perfect segue into my pitch for the Manufacturing Awareness Program that's currently hosted by Eastern Iowa Community College. It is a no-cost, uh, risk-free opportunity for you to dip your toes in manufacturing. It's 25 courses, one hour each course, and at the end you get a certificate in the Manufacturing Awareness Program uh, through Eastern Iowa Community College. And really what that does is it shows employers like McCarthy Bush, like Amy Simler who joined us today, that you are focused on a career in manufacturing or construction. I mean, a lot of it's geared towards forklift operation and maybe inventory management. But for those that have been displaced from career fields in hospitality, in food services, in retail, this is a perfect opportunity, again, a risk-free. Uh, so if you want information on that, so you can reach out to Eastern Iowa Community College and ask more about that program. Amy, I'm going to pitch this over to Chris Caves, my partner here. Chris has some questions regarding, in the same vein, workforce development and what that looks like moving forward. Chris? All right, thanks, Andy. So um, we hit on a couple of topics that are really relevant right now in response, in the community's response uh, to the pandemic. We've got um, employees that have been displaced from their um, jobs. And what we want to see, we've got to get this economy back in action, right? So we want to see movement, we want to see engagement, and we want to see those folks who may have lost their jobs. Um, uh, make an effort to upskill, reskill, or like you said, Amy, try something new. People might be thinking, I don't know, is construction really back online 100%? Are your employees, Amy, building major infrastructure and in large buildings right now? Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, everyone was holding their breath in March just to see, like, how is this all going to happen? We had teams that were meeting on a weekly basis, just trying to like watch every week and see what was happening. Um, and we've been very fortunate. We have had um, only one project put on hold, but not canceled. So that was awesome. And we on the sales side have had a lot of people expressing interest at building yet in 2020. So those are really encouraging um, conversations. And I love to be able to share that with people because some people are still a little bit nervous. Um, so I'm very positive about our economy. I think that people had that hard stop and they're wanting growth and they're wanting things to kick back again. Um, and interesting on that um, workforce and workplace um, development, I think a lot of people too had a moment where they paused long enough to actually do some introspection of what am I and who am I and where do I want to be in one year or five years? And so if you've been in that spot, like I think this has been almost a blessing in disguise. Like a lot of people are being able to pursue things they probably would not have done in March or February. Amy, let's talk about that in terms of the uh, student perspective. And that can be an adult learner or that can be a traditional student. But if you are an individual right now, Amy, that's thinking about going back to school and making that financial investment in, in um, a, a degree program. Um, what are we talking about right now? Like, do we want, do we want to encourage our youth to look at the, uh, the, the labor market right now and see what is in demand and outside of our essential occupations, Amy, what can you say to these students to promote skilled trades? Right, like skilled trades is still in demand. 
Um, it is not, it did not stop. It did not fall off the map the last couple of months. Um, and I've always told students, um, as low as like sixth graders, consider like any of the skilled trades. And it's not just, you know, I'm putting on a hammer belt and I'm gonna go out and, you know, nail some two by fours. Um, you can be a Mason. They are really looking for new uh, people interested in Masonry. Um, there is everything from drywall and painting to carpeting to steel work to um, there. I have a website that I can hand out to people. Um, probably I can hand it to you guys if you have show notes that they can go to and see all the different options. You will get a job if you train in these fields. And that's the exciting part. Um, it's almost people like that instant gratification. You can go to trade school. You can go to the local unions and you will be working and training at the same time. So you will be getting paid while you're being trained. You don't have to go for four years and wait to get that paycheck. Amy, I know your business and some of the talented folks on your team, and you guys really run the spectrum in terms of um, the skills that you have. You've got great financial people. You've got great uh, people that use technology. I've seen that in your, uh, your building, your project managers. You've got a lot of skills for people with advanced education. So people with a bachelor's level education, Amy, if they're like responding to losing their job or being furloughed and they want to enter the commercial construction industry, would you agree that it might make sense to go and pick up some additional training or certification in project management, maybe marketing and sales, maybe different technologies? What is your perspective on that? Absolutely. Um, if you have a bachelor's degree, it shows that you had, um, you've had, applied yourself, you have dedication, you've trained yourself to pursue a dream. Um, and on the flip side, the most important skill that we have within our all of our firms is customer service. It does not change no matter what industry you're in. Um, you don't need to know how to necessarily build the perfect um, you know, addition on a building. If you have good customer service, we can't really um, train that in-house as well as we can teach you how to build on an addition. Um, so if you come with customer service, if you come with great communication skills, um, if you do have great finance, we are, you know, we're always looking for people to help in our accounting and financial sides. Um, so yeah, like I don't want anyone to limit themselves. Like our industry, is good for anyone if this is what you're wanting to do. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> That's perfect response. And I can speak from, you know, I see I'm wearing my, where's the, the side, <laughs> wearing my home base Iowa polo today. But as a veteran myself who transitioned out of the military, you know, when I got out and I had to put on my first pair of blue jeans, I was lost. You know, I really yeah. didn't know how that skill set that uh, how that would transfer into the civilian job sector. And I've been denied employment opportunities because I've lacked a degree or I've lacked experience. But you're talking to somebody who managed a 24 seven air traffic control environment with over 70 air traffic controllers in a combat field um, for well over a year. So that's hard for veterans sometimes. And I know you guys do a good job of seeking out vets and hiring them to come and work for McCarthy Bush or Bush Construction or Clinton Engineering. But uh, you're right, I mean, don't shortchange yourself. You have these skills sets that are out yes. there. I think post COVID-19, you're going to see resumes make a little shift. Too. Yes. What yes. does that look like, right? Is, right. It, is the degree going to be the, the pinnacle uh, or, or education beyond the bachelor's? Is that going to be the pinnacle or is it going to be life experiences? Because mm -hmm. honestly, I mean, I'll share a little bit about my insight. I was denied a job at a retail business here in the community because I lacked a retail experience. And I thought, wow, how short-sighted of a hiring authority to deny me because I lacked retail experience, even though I could show them for over a decade, I managed an air traffic control environment, again, in combat. So I'm pretty sure I can count two by fours, right? It was just one of those things, but you don't want to be so full of yourself, but you also want to be able to, to relate to what you've done and accomplished and experienced as a professional and then put that into a resume so that you continue to progress again within career fields such as construction. So, I mean, this whole thing has been weird. It's been different. <laughs> it turned everybody kind of on their head and I'm expecting some major changes moving forward. What do you guys think? I agree with that. And I love what you just said about your experience because um, I've mentored a few different people with their resume writing and I've seen a lot of people 
completely jump into another industry and it may, wasn't necessarily ours. Um, some people have been in professional services and now they're a nonprofit or, you know, like it just is really nice to see people really looking at themselves and saying, what do I want to do? Who do I want to be? Um, our security blanket got pulled out from under us. And so now we're having to like look a little deeper in ourselves, but then like to take every experience that you have and whatever job you're applying for, fine tune your resume and your cover letter or email to apply towards that position. Instead of it just being a blanket one, um, make sure you take all your skills and let that person really see who you are. So I love that ex uh, example you gave. Yeah, we see that a lot. Homebaseiowa.gov. It's an amazing program the state of Iowa has created. And I download resumes from there every single month. And I send them out to a database of human resource professionals. Some of the veterans who apply for jobs have a very detailed resume focused on a type of career they want. And some of them have a very general resume. So I completely agree with what you said. When you're applying for a specific job, go ahead and draft your cover letter or modify your resume to speak to that specific hiring authority. Because sometimes Sometimes the general resume just get overlooked because they don't see that you have experience mm -hmm. that will benefit their place of employment. Great. Chris, do you have anything else to add? You know, I was just going to say, Andy, before we let Amy go for the day, um, uh, Bush Construction has been a great community partner. And I know firsthand that they've supported a lot of events locally in our community. Amy, can you just talk to the audience today about how important it is for an organization, for a business, um, to continue to make um, certain things a priority uh, to help build momentum and get some um, energy and hope back in this economy. What has Bush got their eyes set on for the near future? Right, we do um, love our community. We love um, providing opportunities for people within our community because without them, without our employees and supporting them, we're really not a business. So um, it's just really important for us to do that. So going forward, um, we have still um, maintained a key role in um, reaching out to schools. We'll go to any school. Um, it ranges from, um, you know, like their seventh and eighth grade classes that we'll go to and just present to them what this can look like for your future. Um, we've gone to um, some of the high schools have um, skilled trade type programs or home building programs. Um, so we want to make sure that we're supporting all of those other people that like Eastern Iowa Community College and all of those types of places that we have a Chris Cates, let's help her out. How can we be the platform to help her be what she needs to be to help people out and to give them that hope that there is great jobs. There is going to be a stronger, stronger economy, I think, than what we even had before. Um, and so, yeah, we're here to help out in any of those ways. That's awesome. I say everybody just keep, uh, keep an eye on Bush Construction, follow Amy on LinkedIn, and uh, uh, continue to get ideas from, um, uh, from you know, your example as an organization. All right, Amy, you've been a rock star. Chris, as always, thank you so much for joining me again. We talked to Amy Similar today, the Vice President, VP of Strategic Markets at McCarthy Bush Corporation and Bush Construction. Thank you so much again for joining us. And in the meantime, guys, go out there, look for jobs, look for opportunities. Take this downtime to benefit yourself professionally, network via online methods, get on LinkedIn, get on Facebook, start making those connections because I guarantee you it'll be invaluable as you move forward. My name is Andy Sokolovich. I am the VP of Economic Development at Clinton Regional Development Corporation. That's Chris Caves of East Niro Community College. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. Bye. Thank you.